proved everyone wrong. After years of challenge, after bitter challenge, he showed we can rise up and overcome anything and anyone. But this is a game where you can put in a big hit one week and get taken out the next. Our moment of glory was short-lived as we were crowned champions of a world about to close. Celebrations cut short and no chance to defend our rightful status as the best in the world. And while rugby in South Africa shot down, four distant kingdoms united, lions, plotting to invade our borders and dethrone the kings. The crown puts a target on your back. And as if the challenge wasn't tough enough, this time the box will play in an empty stadium without the Green Army driving at their backs. But this is where we, as South Africans, are called to do our part. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, when Saturday comes, stop doing it. It's time to do less of this and more of this. And this. And whatever you call what this guy is doing. He must do it, but at home. We will wear this, and we will definitely wear this. We will make the country our stadium. Our lounges will be our box suites. Our couches, our front row seats. So light your fire, South Africa, in your hearts and your brides. They can take our passionate people out of the stadium, but they can never take the passion out of our people. Because we are stronger together, stronger forever. That's it, man. John, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here, but I don't know if I can do this, but um, it's, I'm stressing, I'm physically not coping, I'm sweating like a pregnant pig, uh, my tummy is running like Zola, but it's, it's a bit much for me today. I don't know. Listen here. Um, Listen here. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Mm. Listen, the, it was just the first game. Like, we haven't okay. played in like two years. I promise you, this is going to be different. This is the big one. The boys know that if they don't win this one, it's oh, But don't worry, this is the one. It, 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 it's okay. fine. It's fine. Just like, like you're wearing the jersey. Are you wearing the jersey? Are you wearing the jersey? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Like yeah. You've got that springbok on your chest, my friend. Listen, yeah. I've got a springbok on your chest. It says world champion underneath it, my friend. Like, it doesn't matter. Okay. This is the one. This is huge. It is Stephen Kishaw's 50th game. You know what I mean? Okay. Pollard's 51st game. You know, they go, look, let me tell you, after what happened last week, uh, let me tell you, your you, Isabet, has, he needs payback. It's been, after eight hours, last week. So I promise you this is going to be amazing. This is the one. You want to okay. be on that seat. I can't do this alone. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm coming, but, but, I'm coming. But let me tell you one thing. If you think you're nervous, imagine the referee, how nervous the referee is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is true. Which is true. All right. Okay. You got. Me. I got you. I got you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. Are you sure? Okay, but yeah, I'm go, coming. Go. I'm storming. Go. I'm storming. Come now. Just, just, just. Poka! It's, it's, it's Friday then. It's Saturday. It's Friday then. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Ah, Nebra! Let's go. Let's go. It's Let's time. do this, buddy. It's How are you time. feeling? I am stressed, but I am excited. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. But I do have a message for South Africa. Can't wait. <laughs> Rugby fans of South Africa, I'm Sivan Yessi, and I realize the irony of parodying a Scottish guy for an inspiring speech about the Springboks. But I see a whole army of my countrymen here in defiance of the British and Irish Lions. You have come here as free fans, and free fans you are. What would you do with that freedom? Will you cheer? Will you keep the faith? 
or will you give in to despair? Expect us to lose, and maybe another defeat will not sting as much. But many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day for one chance? Just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take the first game, but they'll never take the series! Boca! 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 It was the Lions discipline that cost them dearly in the first half. It was completely the reverse in the second. Only the first game, there's two more to go. There's no other option now. South Africa, 17. The British and Irish Lions, 22. Uh, definitely, it's salvageable. Well, you have to. You have to solve it. We've got to be far more accurate from start. South Africa are going to come back, and they're going to come back with Avengers. I'm actually not yuppie on. I'm on your ass with. I, I've got the f the thing is. What did they say? Could you put your Could you put your Oh my goodness, goosebumps! Oh man, that They're is awesome. just. It's time. What a show we have lined up. Sia Kolisi speaking. We have Squidge is going to be talking. It's so action packed, so inspiring. I look forward to this incredible show and the game today. I can't wait. It's time. We, there's a lot of talk, it's over, it's the final moments. MTN and Castle Lager have generously supplied us with four amazing prize packages worth 100,000 Rand. So How much? 100,000 Rand. Tell them what, what's the prizes. Our, our buds at Castle Lager have given us four home entertainment systems, including a huge flat screen TV, just like the one on our weather wall, and a speaker system that will knock your socks off. MTN has given us four high speed, high def, high deck Wi Fi routers paired with an MTN My Home data package of 200 gigs per month for 24 months. How crazy is that? It is insane. All you have to do is show us your My Home Stadium. You take a picture or a video of your book watching setup at home and you'll stand a chance to win these insane prizes. Remember, tag the Springboks and use the hashtags My Home Stadium when you post to enter. We'll announce the winners at the end of today's show. Now, one thing I do have to say, they have been sharing some incredible content. I've been seeing them tag, guys, tag, tag, tag. The prize is amazing. During the intro chat, we want to thank all of you out there for watching the show. And by thank you, I mean free data from MTN. MTN has given us 500 one gig data top-ups to give away over the course of this week's show. And the next to stand a chance to win yours, just share this live stream to your Facebook page right now. Click now, right now, now, now. Click it now, Yenzangoku. And we'll get to our auditors and our lawyers to check it all. We'll drop you a DM and you get a voucher for one gig worth of MTN data. Do it now, press now, 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 do it now. It's go Boga time. Get 200 gigs for just 399 per month, including a 40 gig video streaming bundle with my MTN home. It's go time, Boka. Everywhere you go, MTN. Oh, man. But it's, um, it's stressful times. It, it is very stressful times. It, it is. Like, for me, I was, it reminds me 
I was in the 2019 World Cup in oh. Japan. You should be jealous. You I should am. be jealous. I it am. was unbelievable. I have a video here. Check it this. I have this video here which describes the experience for me in a video. It's just, it was unbelievable. Look, look at the, it's just the passion field. It is New Zealand versus South Africa, the opening game. Oh, I but remember. Goosebumps all in. That's what we need from the boys today. All the passion Pumped. in there. If you don't remember, we lost that first game. Exactly. We lost that first game. It didn't go well, and we still end up winning the World Cup. I have, I have a ticket. Look, look, look at the picture. I have a ticket. Look at my ticket there. Oh, oh man, I still have it framed in my house. A lot of bragging going on here. A lot of bragging. Uh, I, I even had dinner with the entire team. I oh. Look at this. Look, look at this. I was at the oh. Look at this. Okay. Before social distancing. Yeah. Oh, look at that. But for me, what it reminds me of is that I called Sia a few days after the, 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 that, that loss. Yes, name drop. Uh, and the thing that was unbelievable about it was that I was able to speak to him. And even after he had just lost against the user, he said to me, we're still going to win the World Cup. Then I spoke to him the day before the final, which is England versus South Africa. And England, six days earlier, had just killed the world champions, which is New Zealand. And he said to me, we're still going to win tomorrow. It's in God's hands. And for me, that's the kind of belief that we have today. And that's why I believe we're going to win today. Because that's to. the kind of belief that they have. And we are. I think Definitely. we are. It's time. And let's just take a look. So if, um, if we look at the stats from last week's game, and if you look at that, it tells a lot of the style the, the different teams played. The first one, especially, the passes. 73 versus 104. That shows you the, the box have a, a once-off uh, runner from nine mm. that they normally use, in contrast with the Lions, with a lot more passes before they, they set up the contact Yeah, because obviously we go from nine, nine straight to a forward, but they go from nine fly half off the fly half to a forward and they pass in, mm. uh, amongst each other. But if you didn't watch on Saturday and you don't know rugby, for people who love rugby, it was an unbelievable battle. It was a game of two halves, but it was unbelievable. The first half we had, then the second half they were able to adapt. I don't know what he said, Gatton said to them yep. in, the, in the change room. But... For me, the most interesting stat there, 38 kicks by South Africa, right? Yeah. And 27 by us. Abs by, by them. Absolutely. By them. And you said it earlier, a kick is only as successful as the chaser. Mm -hmm. So we have to kick smart again today. Kick smart. And there's going to be a lot of kicking. If you think it's just, just going to be like touch traffic running around, mm. it's not going to happen. But for me, what I think is incredible, for me, kick the ball. Yes, kick the ball. But mm. you've got to get the ball back. Exactly. A, a kick without... A chaser is you giving the ball away. It's useless. Me. And that's where guys like like uh, uh, Peter Stefter Toy, those type of guys are going to be mm. so uh, important today. Uh, you know, they, they get to the rucks quickly. Mm. They are tall players. They, they compete in the mm. air and on the ground as well. Okay. It's, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, another big one that I think a lot of rugby players, people who are not in the scrum, we were both forwards. Mm. The grass. It's been raining. It's wet. A lot of the, that grass is in the shadows. It doesn't get much time out in the sun. So it's very hard to scrum over there. It is. It's going to be. And we saw it uh, last week. The, the turf is, is ripping apart a bit. And I hope. I don't know what you can do. In fact, I don't know if you have to like, put a roller on or more sand or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. Uh, but especially on, on the tight head side, we need to have a, a, a wide stance. We need to get that sumo deep squat and, and, and put the leverage on the inside of the foot. But it, it's going to be. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see uh, which team uh, has the positioning of the feet right and, the, and the, the center of gravity right for that hinging thing that's been popping up a lot of times. The, the eight that we're starting with of, of the forwards are heavier than last week. I think that could help us. Mm. It has to. It has to help us. It, it has to be... We didn't quite dominate those, uh, those set phases. And it's something we have to look at uh, in this game. And I think the changes we made is... is, is, is Kind of telling us the direction the box are going to go. They're going to they're going to he focus heavily on the on the set phases and you know mauling and that type of stuff, which is which is our game plan. I mean, if if, if it's not broken, then don't, don't try and fix it. Well, that's uh, that's great advice. If, yeah, it's, well, if it's not broke, engineering. It's, it's, did you it's study engineering? Mechanic 101. Oh, if it's mm -hmm. not broken, don't fix it. All right, guys, we're going to be speaking about a lot more of the stats and all the intricacies of rugby. But last week we played bulk trivia over there by the fireplace right here. But this week. Our correspondent took a quiz to the streets in the seven gears it goes outside. Over to you, you beautiful, ripple, chocolate, modest man, seven gears.
Say hello to Bok Trivia, an exciting rugby trivia game to test your Springbok knowledge and win big. Visit boktrivia.mtn.co.za and subscribe for only three rand a day and be the one to beat. Answer 15 questions in five minutes. Just swipe right for yes or left for no. Build up points and stand a chance to win big with Bok Trivia with weekly cash prizes and more. Stand a chance to win your share of 1 million rand, one of 100 signed Springbok jerseys, one of 10 autographed framed Springbok replica jerseys, or one of 100 Springbok hampers. It's go time, Bokka. Everywhere you go, MTN. I love Cape Town. I love Cape Town. It's amazing, those flower ladies have such deep passion and they had new answers that I had no, they were screaming them from all directions. <laughs> the Ghees, that's why sometimes you can't hear a lot of the time because the Ghees was just on fire. Absolutely, South Africa is such a fantastic place and we have so much character. And it, it, we see it in our sport, we see it on the streets and people are so amped for this match, uh, it's, it's insane. Uh, the next guest I'm an absolute big fan of. He is the master of creating content on TikTok, social media. It can be about rugby, cricket, whatever it is. But he's actually a teacher moving into comedy. Please put your hands together. From all the way from last week, he was such a hit, we brought him back again. Kuki Kutle, hi, brother. Hey, guys. Good and you. How you been? Not too bad, thanks. Obviously, tough game last week. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully this week we will bounce back. But otherwise, good and you guys. Well, oh, fantastic. Are you also as stressed as me and Siv? I mean, we've been talking about this the whole week. Um, it's, it's almost like a final, you know. Um, everybody is, is amped. You can, you can see the frustration in all of the fans' uh, faces for, uh, for coming for, out from, from last weekend. And, and this is go time. Um, 
So are you also feeling it? Do you also have a bit of butterflies running around in the stomach? No, I've been stressed. I mean, yesterday during uh, during my classes, I didn't teach at all yesterday. I just uh, sat down with the kids and, we, and, I, and I told them uh, I can't focus on teaching them in the box or, or playing in a final <laughs> the next day. So uh, we just sat there together as a class and shared our emotions and shared our stresses. I thought we needed, I needed mental support. I needed them to to be behind me as well. Yeah, no, I'm 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 very stressed this morning today. Let's hope none of the parents of the kids that you're teaching are watching <laughs> this particular insert because then they know that this teacher's doing nothing. I think they would understand. I wish I had it. Uh, I think they would understand. Okay, so for me, you are content creating king, and I love all of your content. And you've actually given us a video that you've just created. It's premiering right here today on the Smoke Saturday show, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And we'll talk about it afterwards. Let's take a look at your new video. Pretty spot on. Uh, it's, it's been a week full of drama. <laughs> it's going uh, to be viral. It's viral. It's going to be viral. Viral. Run. <laughs> what is your feeling about today? Kiki? Honestly, out of your heart, what um, do you think is going to happen? No, my heart says the box. Um, the box is going to win. I think um, every time the box gets pushed in the corner, I think that's where we get to see the, the true reflection of where the box are. I think um, a lot of them, I, I see the English pundits, everyone have written us off, but listen, if there's ever a game for the box to win, it's this one. I mean, you look at the vibe in the camp and the guys and the focus this week. I mean, I think they're going to be, I think it's going to be one of the, one of the games that we remember for a long time. One of the best box performances we'll see today in a, in a long time. So for me, do you think that a whole drama off the field is going to help us or work against us as the booker? Because I, I think your video is all about that video, that, that video. Yeah. What, what's your view about that video? Yeah, I think obviously the, 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 off the field stuff. I think that adds to the drama, adds to the spice. I mean, um, I think it's, it, it becomes a major talking point into the week, but I think it's going to help the box. I think it's going to fuel the box. I think um, it, I, I think a, a lot of the people thinking it might work negatively, I think it's going to be positive for the box. I love it. Awesome. We took banter to a whole new level. Um, ne only an, hour <laughs> <laughs> an hour of banter. An hour of banter. Definitely. It's a good way to spend an hour. So for me, how do you actually go about doing a video? How do you get the idea of the, the content that you're shooting? Because they always say the hardest part of shooting content is consistency. No, 100%. That's, that's, that's the hard part is trying to be consistent, trying to come up with more ways that I can be funny. I think in always trying to push myself to different limits, whether it's doing an interview video, whether it's just doing a general video like the one I did last week. But um, the hardest part for me is obviously coming up with the concepts. And once I come up with it, then it's I got a little, I got a little joke diary. I called my JD. My, I carry my JD around with me all the time, so if I get an idea, I pop it in there. And then from there, I just start circling ideas, and I start shame. People see me walking in, in the corridors or at school. They see me talking to myself. And that's me actually. <laughs> that's me actually practicing what I want to say. <laughs> and then that's, that's pretty much the process. So if you were Sia Kalisi, and after that game, when you knew you just lost the first uh, uh, test against the British Irish Lions, and it's been twelve years. What would you have said in your, um, on your interview? What do you think you would have said if you were saying uh, in, the, in, in your vibe, was, yeah. in your vibe, in your vibe? Um, obviously, tough. Uh, first of all, credit to the opposition. Um, uh, we got to give credit to them first. I thought a uh, good, good, good victory for them. And obviously, I'd like to thank the man upstairs. Thank you, God, for giving us the talent <laughs> to play this game today. And um, obviously, you're a tough game. Um, we don't make excuses and blame Rust or anything like that. Um, we uh, obviously, obviously, it's a tough loss, but we'll bounce back. Um, the, uh, a famous man once said, "So, but are you stars? But are you finished?" So uh, we gave the Lions a bit of a head start, and then now hopefully we'll capitalize. Yeah, listen, the next two tests. Um, obviously, we're a bit bleak. The boys are a bit down. Obviously, um, 
we might have to do a few bit of fitness on Monday, but uh, we're happy with that, obviously. Um, but yeah, we'll bounce back next week and um, uh, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens then. <laughs> I hope when you meet ladies in clubs, that's how you speak yeah. to them. Uh, hello, hello, can I have a drink? Yeah. I can have a drink. Uh, <laughs> <good. laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I have to. You have to. I've always, I've always, I've always got to stay in character. I mean, uh, so I think uh, hopefully it, works, it works sometimes. <laughs> Bro, you have such a bright future. We're looking forward to working with you and doing more and more things. Please keep the content coming. Tag us. We'll share it. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing more stuff from you. Absolutely. No, awesome. Thanks so much for having me, sure, guys. Brother. Appreciate it. Love you guys to bits. Thanks, guys. It's awesome, man. He's, he's ridiculous. That's a great oh, South man. African. I love him. It's so... It's so I mean, if you've seen the speech, yeah, the long yeah, speech, yeah. and you saw that... What'd it go? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Earlier today, we had a laugh and chat with this guy. Let's take a look. Boca? Boca? It's Friday. Boca! It's Saturday. It's Saturday. And now we've got a guest that's no stranger to us. He was in the World Cup winning squad in 2019, a captain of the Springboks and one of the oldest players to ever wear the green and gold. And today he's here to talk about last week's game, scrumming and why he thinks the box are going to take the win today. Welcome to the show, Skulk Smiley Brits. Oh, Skulk. look at that. Oh, hey, Smiley. I just said to serve, um, I said to serve earlier, it's, it's always a pleasure to see a hooker smile. It's, um, it's, uh, it, it, it just, you, you just lighten up the room. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's so great speaking to you guys and, uh, yeah, giving you a bit of an update and a thought on last Saturday's game and going into today. So how does it feel to be the, one of the oldest players to ever wear a Springbok jersey? Dave, actually, it's second oldest. Unfortunately, <laughs> a victim man put me by. Literally, if I played in the final, um, then I would have been the oldest Springbok. But I, unfortunately, I missed it with a week or two. So Victor's the oldest. I'm the second oldest. But yet, <laughs> I'm the oldest World Cup winner. So, uh, nice. yeah, so I've got one up and... How do you feel about last week's game? Oh, it's a, it's a proper test match. I, I mean, the, I was so proud watching the boys play after, you know, not having a proper contest, prep being totally different to uh, to what they normally used to. To put that first half performance in was fantastic. Uh, very measured. Uh, second half, I must say, the Lions uh, took the, uh, came out with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and uh, took the game away from the Springboks. But saying that is there's a lot of things that could have gone our way for for a team that hasn't played together properly. And it was weird watching from the side. Um, and you can see there's a bit of a lack fit, of not fitness, but sharpness rather. And hopefully today it's going to be something totally different. There was a there was a lot of build up before um, before last week's game about the importance of the scrum. And and I mean, there's nobody better to ask than yourself being in the middle. Um, there's been some changes. Do you think it'll be a, a, a positive changes? Is it more tactical? Do you think we make it the upper hand of the scrum today? Well, going back to last week's performance, I was unbelievably impressed by the, the starting front. I was very surprised mm. that we took them off at half time. I thought we were going to keep them on for a bit longer and then bring the bomb squad on round minute 50, 60. Um, but yet there was probably a uh, a plan beforehand that you can empty the tank till minute 40 and then um, the rest, the other three big boys will get onto the pitch. But I, it, they looked, I must say, seeing the boys coming off the pitch at half time, uh, the front row looked excited. I thought they are going to play a couple of more minutes, but that was not the case. Coming into this weekend, I'm very excited. Um, as much as I was last, last weekend, it's hopefully we'll technically use our super subs or bomb squad a bit better. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's, it's we didn't get the rub of the green and sometimes that happens. And what do you feel about all of the mind games between the week, uh, you know, since everything started? The mind game, for me, you seem like the kind of person who just smiles and nods and does his thing. Uh, how do you feel about all the mind games that have been played? Well, wh how amazing, isn't it, to have... Uh, well, let me rather start this way. Rugby has changed, sport has changed. Now the player is uh, is entertainment, the coach is entertainment, and all the build-up. It's almost like a boxing game back, uh, <laughs> back in the 
know, like Muhammad Ali. And I, I must say, Gatlin was very clever last week, putting pressure on Marius. And 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 this week, you know, Rusty had his own tactic. And, and building up to this, the first test match, there was a lot of uh, smack talk, if I can say that. And this week, it's the same. So for me, it's it's part and parcel about the game. You know, is how do you, how can you influence the rest? Because they do play a massive part. Uh, in the game, if if it's a close game, and how can you influence him uh, uh, in a way that doesn't seem direct, rather indirect? <laughs> uh, for me, I like it. I, the coaches have always been a personality, uh, and the players. So for me, it's it's, it's anything that can hype up the ga- game, put more eyes on the game, and and hopefully the performance on Saturday will be the same as uh, the hype. Perfect. Let's um. Let's hope they, they take it. Thank you for joining us, Skulk. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we all smile after this game. No, I'll definitely more than, hopefully more than just smile. I'll have a couple of beers and, and a <laughs> glass of wine celebrate the Fox win. Uh, big fan of yours, my friend. Love you. Great South African. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Have a great Saturday. Cheers. Oh, I love him. What a guy. What a South African, a great example of a rugby player. And for me, that's why your daughter should marry a rugby player or your son should marry a lady who plays rugby. Mm. And a great left hook, ask Owen Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, South Africa. The Springboks, champions of the world. We are the world. Champions, not him or him or her, not some of us here or there, not them. We are the world champions, all of us connected. A cup of gold at the end of the South African rainbow. It's go time, Boga. It's go time, Zanzi. commercial gives me goosebumps and I just want to cry like what like, people can say what they say about this country what an incredible group of people we have in this country that commercial just depicts what an amazing bunch of people we are it's, it's, it's ridiculous it's what we're all about and and we you know everybody we, we, we're so multicultural mm. and we, we've got so many uh, different views but somehow once we gather around yes. this jersey it's just like it's like we're one and we are brothers and sisters and we need this we no. oh, we need this today we need, need this badly need this badly these guys but for me you know if you love rugby and you just watch rugby for entertainment purposes there's scrums there's line outs there's malls there's collisions but there's so much more in intricacies of this unbelievable game and there's laws and rules and interpretation and personally my favorite section of this entire show is definitely the next one it is law and order I'm over at this keyboard guy. If I do that, my back is yes! gone. Yes! Back is gone. I'm looking forward to this. Welcome back, international referee and legend, Mark Lawrence. Nice to see you, Mark. <laughs> Mark, who can that? Who can that, sir? I love the passion, Rubs. How's it? Um, like yeah. You, you you make me excited. I just can't wait for this afternoon, eh? Yeah, it's, listen, yeah, I must be honest. Uh, a lot of my friends really loved you last week. They loved the honesty. They loved the authenticity. They loved that you, you didn't act to be... Per- you just were just the person. And it's, I think it's, it's, it was so amazing, and I'm so excited for today. Ah, uh, it's exciting stuff. Uh, that's what we need. We need passion. I know there's been a lot of hype about refs, but remember... Uh, everybody out there, come and referee. Come and be a touch judge, man. You've got the best seat in the house and you're <laughs> part of the action. Yeah. And everybody hates you. doesn't matter what you do. It's, uh, yeah. but there's, there's been a lot of chat. As long as it's you, everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You, as you said, there's been a lot of talk and there's a, there's a lot of, of stuff that's a bit concerning. Me and Siv had a, had a chat as well. A lot of grey areas that, that the normal Joe public guy, I mean... But we're struggling a bit. The, uh, when it's out, when it's in, uh, you know, um, how to keep the ball alive, all that type of stuff. And I know you, you, um, you actually brought a couple of clips and are going to take us through a couple of those scenarios. 
Oh, that, that's so well said. You know, I, I can just tell you a, a, a one minute story was um, when I couldn't play rugby anymore and I was injured, I decided, uh, you know, I get involved in the administrative side and then I would watch the referees and I thought they were terribly poor. And I challenged one guy in a club game and he said to me, why don't you come and write a law exam and let's see what you score. So I did the law exam a, a month later and I got a, a, a cool 38%. <laughs> and then I realized my whole life I've been playing this game and eff effectively I only know one out of the three laws. And um, I decided that, that's it. I'll become a referee. And, and a whole new world opened for me when I saw what, what it was like to actually read a law book. So I always ask the guys, who's read the law book? And the interesting thing is out of everybody, our game is the only game where we haven't actually read the instruction manual. You know, um, what a typical man. We love the game. Oh, we support that's a man. The game, but who's <laughs> read the instruction manual? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I feel you. So for me, yeah. So you so, know, so, sorry, could, I'm chipping in. So no, the, the whole good. thing is, uh, you know, if you want to enjoy the game, uh, read the laws and actually know them. And I think that's what we're going to do with this little snippet uh, today. Is just. Um, let me make the game more enjoyable for the person out there. Because if you understand what's going on, you can actually sit back and enjoy the game. Um, and that's the idea. Hopefully, these clips will 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 give you. So, if you want to um, if you want to have a look, uh, I think we can run a clip with uh, Cheslin Colby. And and there's been a lot of discussion about this. But I thought what I'd discuss here is just to tell you what an assistant referee has to look for in this clip. So he's got two duties. He's got his primary duty, which is to decide is the guy in touch or not. And then on top of that, his secondary duty is to decide is there foul play or not. So in this instance, and we're watching it in slow motion as it happens, and there's a lot to look at. You've got to decide has the ball crossed the plane of touch or not? Um, who was in possession of the ball? Who kicked the ball? Um, at the same time, you've got to decide who took it out. Then on top of that, you've got to ask, is there foul play? So if we're looking at that, the question around a collision in the air, were both players realistic catches of the ball? And, and you've got to do all that in, a, in, a, in probably under a second. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes we do get it wrong because you've got to take all this information in in one shot and make a decision. Um, but it's just to give you an idea how difficult it is. And then to add insult to injury, the laws are complicated. And hopefully we'll go through that. Are you guys with me so far? Oh, we've got yes. you. I'm going to get a notepad. We've got a notepad. We've got it. We listen. We're recording. <laughs> okay. Remember, we're going to do a game where you guys are going to run touch for me. So um, <laughs> let's see if you get it right. So let me just take you through the touch laws because I thought they were quite interesting um, laws. And uh, if we run the first clip, you'll see this is a, <clears throat> this is a basic clip of judging whether the ball has crossed the plane of touch and whether the player is in or out. Watch the replay here now. So we have a ruling by the assistant ref. And the interesting thing, ball has crossed the plane, out. player is on the touch line, that ball is out on the full. It's got nothing to do with that player because he is deemed to be in touch when his foot is on the line. The ball has crossed the line. So in this situation, he hasn't taken the ball out. The ball has been kicked out on the full, and it's his team's throw-in, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, watch the next clip. If we run the next clip, and I'll show you how uh, what a fine margin there is. In this clip, the ball hasn't crossed the plane of touch, okay? The player is in touch, and now he's deemed to have taken it out. And we're literally talking six or seven inches can make a difference between whose throw-in it is and who's throwing it isn't, okay? So those are the pretty basic laws. Um, if we now take a step up um, and players have become incredibly skillful. So they've, uh, what's happened with the lawmakers, the laws have been made to try and increase the ball in play time. So what we want to do is we want to try and get more ball in play time by making sure that players are rewarded for being particularly skillful in keeping the ball in. So if we run the next clip, this is an interesting one. This is a plain situation where the, this is a penalty. The ball is kicked. The player is in touch. The ball has crossed the plane. Uh, and in this case, it's the Blues. You'll notice he's knocked the ball. And unfortunately, the ball and the player are in touch. Even though he's in the air, 
He's deemed to be in touch because he was standing in touch in the first place. He's jumped, he's knocked the ball back in. While most people will think that's a play on, that's the one case where it is out. Okay. Clearly out, and it should be the Crusaders throwing. So unless, Are you unless, guys with me yes. so far? So, but if he had jumped from inside of the field to outside without touching the ground and hit it out, then it, it would be out back into the field, right? You, I'm, com I'm coming to get you to be a, a, an <laughs> assistant ref. Now, if he jumps from inside, catches the ball, throws it back, and then lands out, yes. then it's a play on. And hopefully we'll show you in this next clip. So have a look at this one. Uh, if we can get them to run the next one. Watch this. So here's a situation where a guy runs from out, uh, catches the ball that was out. Same scenario as the Blues. But he lands inside. So watch this. He's out, player's out, but he lands inside. Okay? Compared to the Blues clip where the guy was standing out, hit the ball, landed out. This one. He's jumped, caught the ball, and landed inside, and now that is a play on. Incredibly oh. skillful. But again, can you see the margins yes, that yeah. we are talking about that yeah. can affect um, your decision making as a touch judge as you're working this out? It, okay? it, it reminds me so of So remember, cricket. we're talking the plane of touch, we're mm -hmm. talking whether the ball is caught or, or just knocked, and we are talking whether the player was in or out and whether he was in the air or not. Okay. So it's, it gets confusing. All right, with <laughs> okay. me so far? Um, yeah. With you. Yeah. Right. I see a lot of head shaking. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at the next one. <laughs> okay. Just to add insult to injury. So this one, the player knocks, jumps, uh, and knocks the ball back in. Very similar to the one where the previous one, he jumped, he caught the ball and landed in. That's a play on. This one is out. Because although he's done absolutely everything the same, he hasn't caught the ball and landed in. So he's knocked the ball back. So being in touch, ball crossed the plane of touch, knocking it back. Unfortunately, the ball is out on the full. The good news, though, is he does get the throw. So I hope that gives you sort of an idea um, of the technicalities of around judging where the ball is, where the player is, and whether the ball has crossed the plane of touch. And I think you guys will know that in, in, in soccer, it's quite easy because if the ball crosses the plane, whether it's on the ground or not, it's out. Very simple. In rugby, if they kick the ball and it, curve, it goes out across the plane and curves and the wind blows it back and it lands in play, we all know that's a play on. Wow. So um, the laws are tricky. And then just to make sure you guys are on the ball, if a player is standing out and the ball is in the field lying on the ground and a player knocks it or kicks it back in field or just stops it from going out as long as he doesn't catch it then it's a play on because the ball hasn't crossed the plane of touch and it hasn't been held it's just been knocked back wow so that is why you can score a try when you're in touch you can actually run dive and if you're in touch and you pounce and ground the ball it's a try Wow. wow. That is very informative. But th there's a couple of things, other stuff that I want to ask you. In the ruck, I think that's for me quite a contentious place. Um, supporting body weight. Supporting body weight. So my interpretation, I played flanker. You tackle a guy, you release just for a split second, and then you can dig. But you have to be supporting your own body weight, meaning is if you lift your hand and you fell flat on your face, it means you weren't supporting your body weight, right? <laughs> is that interpretation right? Yeah, yeah you're absolutely dead right. So uh, uh, if, we, if, we, if we're going to judge whether the guy is carrying his weight, if he put his hand on a chair and you pulled the chair away and he fell on his face, he wouldn't be holding his body weight, okay? Um, so that is that is quite a thing to judge because remember we have about in the modern game 200 to 250 tackles stroke rucks okay and the referee has to judge at each tackle has the tackler released and rolled away has the tackle assist as you said sir has he has he shown daylight and released so we can just see there's a gap and then and then gone back in okay mm -hmm. um has, is he now supporting his body weight? Is the player on the ground holding on or is he doing a double roll? And then have the arriving players arrived and cleaned out, not from the side, mm. but through the gate, staying on their feet, cleaning out um, and doing it within the law, no shoulder charges. 
and and the referee has to literally literally do that at 200 to 250 rucks and so sometimes a referee comes off the field and and, and it hasn't been maybe a, a fast game but he's exhausted because in his mind he's probably made two to three thousand decisions um just around did he release was there daylight has the tackler rolled away is he supporting his body weight does the ball carrier holding on has he come through the gate blah 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 mm -hmm. and you do that 250 times you can imagine um not to mention the passing of the ball was it forward was it not you know who's the girl in the fourth row uh, in the stands there because she looks quite nice no, i'm only kidding um, so very 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 difficult um decision making for a referee one thing i wanted to ask you mark and it's something i see it's a definite tactic that the british and Irish lions use is they definitely want to try and rip it they want to keep us up and try and rip the ball or force them all uh, to get the turnover however just take us through that again as soon as your knee hits the ground they need to release because then it's a ruck yeah correct so uh, let's just go through a definition of of what a mall really is first of all it's the ball carrier holding the ball okay. and one person from either side so if they can come i know ireland like to do this i know the southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere like to do this they like to do what we call an upright tackle where they where one guy grabs you around your waist and the other guy tackles the ball and then they hold you up so now it's you and two opposition players that's nothing yet as soon as your player joins you in that it's now become a mall and if that ball carrier hasn't got his knee to ground then it's not ruled a ruck, it's ruled a mall. And if he doesn't make the ball available, it's a turnover to the other side, okay? However, if he manages to get his knee to the ground before his player joins and the mall is formed, then the, then, then obviously the uh, referee will call tackle and everybody knows, okay, I need to release here and the, the ball comes out and we play on. So uh, quite an interesting one. Great, great question, um, Rikas. Very good question. I am. Um, I think if I if I walk into you one time, I'm, I'm, you can you can keep me busy for hours. It's a thank you, thank you. That, that it's it's something I actually noticed over the weekend. It's a couple of times where the guys wanna. You can see they actually like extend the knee and like wanna go. Yeah. Almost like they are yeah. uh, trying to get married or something. Yeah. Just <laughs> go on the knee, go on the knee. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something I, I just observed. And and you saying it, you can definitely see that. That, um, that that the only way to combat that, that tactic is just go on the knee. Mm. Just go on the knee and for, for force the ruck, yeah. and, and he's forced to actually leave you. Well, uh, my yeah. brain is zinging. At, yeah. You said something very interesting. You said you will enjoy the game of rugby more if you understand it more. And that is the quintessential line of the day for me. Because <laughs> sometimes I watch it with my, my friends. They don't understand it. They're like, what's happening? And I'm like, no, this is magical. Mm. Like last week's game was a chess game. It's a chess game back and forth. And if you understand the rules, you'll appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely well said, sir. Yeah, you, you must come and referee, really. Um, <laughs> no, it's a, it's, a, it's a complicated game. There's, I think there's something like 700 laws, okay? And um, it, it's very frustrating to watch a game and not to understand what is the referee act actually doing. Um, and my challenge to everybody out there is grab a law book. You can just jump on, uh, on a site and just download the normal laws and start reading through them. Um, you're either going to enjoy it, or if you're one of those insomniacs who can't sleep, start reading the law book, and I promise you, you'll fall asleep immediately. Mm -hmm. If uh, it, it's there's a lot of laws, but it it makes such a difference if you know what's a ruck, what's a tackle, um, what is a maul, um, and you understand these terms, and then you you will understand refereeing decisions a lot better. Make no mistake, uh, you know, in real time and the speed of play, referees do get it wrong. Uh, there's a lot to watch, as I said. But, you know, if we, if we have a look at the modern-day ruck and there's 200 or let's say there's 200 uh, tackle rucks in a game and a referee gets 10 wrong, um, he still scored 95%, which is in anybody's book and in any profession is very, very good. Um, and if a referee gets 10 wrong in a game, for, for argument's sake, compare that to how many, how many infringe, infringements a player makes, how many tackles do they miss, how many knock-ons do they make, how many penalties do they give away? And if you count their mistakes, it, it actually puts things into perspective. Yeah. Remember one thing, 
if the players didn't infringe the laws, we wouldn't need a referee. And yes, I'd probably be without exactly. a job. So uh, <laughs> That, for me, I think that is a perfect place to close it. Referees get about 90% for a test, but the pass rate in South Africa is 33.3. So you guys are overqualified. <laughs> guys are Too overqualified. No. Thank you so much for joining us. My favorite segment, and I hope to see you next week for more questions and answers for the man who knows the laws and is just plucked up the ardor. Awesome. <laughs> Go Boca. Don't Go, Go Boca. Boca. Go Boca. Go Boca. Go Boca. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for having us. Enjoy, man. Cheers, sir. Cheers, Bye. What a nice guy. Love him. He's so nice. Oh. He's so nice. It's a, it's a, it, my, my brain is really like I need ice or something. It's a, <laughs> it's um, a lot to think about. And uh, I understand the stress the refs mm. are under, actually. Guys, a quick reminder. NTN has given us 500 one gigabyte data top-ups to give away over today's show and next week's show. Just share this live stream to your Facebook page and you could stand a chance to win. Decencies obviously apply. Share and win, guys. That's a great prize. That is a great prize. The buses are here. He come the po he come he it's time. Po it's time. Heads up. There we go. Uh, so 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 Focused. They look very calm, I must say. Daba, Kobe. I wish I could know what the guys are listening on there. <laughs> I want to know, because I think they could be listening to opera. Definitely. Enya. There must be some Enya on there. Stephen Kishaw, 50. See, I'm Tanda Kolisi. Ah. Ah. He's just legs. <laughs> Bongi. Valley. They look extremely focused. They look. Wait a minute. They look Fra calm. Fra Fra is definitely listening to a bit of Kurt there. It looks like Faf wants to kick. That tap is a bit. <laughs> it looks like Faf wants to kick out the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Herbert, we need a big one from you today. Yeah, he's definitely gonna. Definitely. Damien. The other guys look calm. I must say, I, I'm, I, I can't imagine what's going through their heads at this stage. For, I think for me, it's it's just so much has been said, mm. and it's like it's like when you're about to have a a fight with someone, speak, 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 speak. But when the first punch is thrown, that's when it counts. No one's gonna say you out debated me. Yeah, exactly. they're gonna go who yeah. won the fight. Exactly, and this is a fight. It's gonna. It, um, the, to, the, for me, the, the most important thing will be the first five minutes. That will set the trend. That first it's gonna hit. be, and like you said. That's a fight. The first punch, 99%, <laughs> that guy wins. And last week we saw it with, with look on your arm, that first hit, it was a piece of poetry. It was, it's even more beautiful than a little girl's, uh, what do you call it, a birthday cake. Mm. But um, that will be, that will set the tone. We need to, that first knock, that first contact, we need to dominate. Oh, it's a... It's a myth. It's going to be a big game today. Look at him towering. It's 1 0 to hit a two. I told you. After last week, let's be honest, it's 1 0. It's yeah, 1 0. It was, it was. And I think he's taking it personally. I think uh, <laughs> the guns are cocked, and I think he's going to be, he's going to be, he's not going to hold anything back. Oh, I look forward to this game. Oh, man. I'm getting goosebumps. The footage is there. The boys have arrived in the field. The passion. The, it's just every single Springbok that has ever put on that green and gold jersey is there. Every single person who's ever run out of green and gold is there. And for me, it is so important. It is so needed that we need this win. As a country, we need this. This is more than just a rivalry. This is personal. I mean, this happens once every 12 years. And... Like we said, we have only this game. If, if, if we don't come out today and we take this, the tour is, the hype is done. Everybody, it, it's, like, it's like just a, a big load of negativity and we can't have it. We, the guys really need, I, I know I'm saying this a lot and we are emphasizing it the whole time, but please guys, we, we need this. Oh, Everybody man. needs this. For me, it's, not, it's the same as the Olympics. It's not just sport. No. Something about sport unites. But up next, it's time for Lions Watch, where we go into the safari amongst the big cats and see what they're up to. So for me, this is quite an interesting one. They call it British Irish Lions. They say there's only four teams. Yeah. But actually, if you look deep into it, there's more than four teams. Mm -hmm. The British Irish Lions has eight countries, eight countries represented in that team. Let's go from there. There's New Zealand. 
There's New Zealand. Yeah. There is, I think, what, what is that? South Africa. South Africa. There's Philippines. Philippines. I didn't even know Philippines played rugby. Played rugby. And then there's Tonga. And Tonga, of course. That's a, a Southern Island nation that's with a huge rugby tradition. I think Jonah Loma was also yeah. from Tonga. So would you call it the British, Irish, Lions, mm -hmm. New, Zealand, New Zealand, South African, Philippine, with the um, Fonamarva Tonga, Fonamarva. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous to watch, but it's, it shows you that they have so many countries, it's so many nations, and rugby is international and beautiful. That is the beauty of this entire unbelievable test. Es especially in today's area of professionalism where, where the guys get overseas young, they, it, they get into club systems, and they can actually qualify to to play for for country for the other countries and especially I mean to to play for the British and Irish Lions I think it's I think it, it, it it's a huge honor and and yeah um, let's hope those particular guys don't have such a good game today <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and let's hope uh, that bit of luck and rolls out onto our side let's move on uh, looking forward to the content that's still to come please stay tuned make sure you sure share share the content and you could win some unbelievable prizes but up next we have some very funny moments it's been very very serious but there are some funny moments we'll start off with the first video which is warren gatlin and elwin jones mr robocop alan Wynn will become the first player of the pro era to play 10 lions test matches what does that say about him that he's old <laughs> uh I love it. Honest. <laughs> no, he's he's honest. But he is old. He's I think out. he's about 104 in any case. Yeah. Um, Duan also had, a, had, had something to say about playing against Colby and just the two in general. That is why Cheslin Colby is as highly regarded as he is. Simply mesmerising. I'm really looking forward to the challenge. You know, they're the world champs. You know, going up against uh, Cheslin Colby. It's probably, you know, one of the best wingers in the world at the moment. So, you know, I, I can't wait to go up against him. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. All right, let's move on to the next video. Um, it's definitely some great content and I'm sure it must be amazing to tour overseas. Um, so it is, uh, Jamie George is speaking. Tuesday afternoon session, that's always our big rugby session. So we'd had a forward session or a split session in the morning. The forwards did some scrums and lineouts. Uh, and the backs probably did nothing. Um, as a non-23, it was an opportunity for us probably to get a little bit of frustration out. It was a pretty feisty session, and probably one of the feistiest sessions that I've ever been involved in, really. There was a fair bit going on. There's not a referee there. It was pretty old school. What we focused on as a non-23 group was putting our best foot forward, and in doing so, we're preparing the team as best as we possibly can. Um, it starts off with sort of a respectable square shoulder, um, nice tackle, go to ground. As soon as someone slightly goes above and beyond that, then it becomes full contact very quickly. Um, so yeah, that was uh, it was an interesting session to be a part of, uh, and it was actually a really enjoyable one because you know at the end of it, despite the almost the hostility throughout the session, you came off the came out of the session, you come upstairs here, you come into the lunchroom, and everyone's laughing and joking again. Um, everyone's aware that there are some disappointed people around, but at the same time. Um, yeah, we, we did everything that we possibly could to prepare the team well. I'm just amazed to see a tight three guy passing to the left. That was pretty impressive. But for me, that's the beauty of rugby. You can go into each other, hit yourselves hard, do everything hard, but be able to have a beer afterwards and laugh about it. That's the beauty of the rugby. That's why we love this game. Mm. And talking about that, let's talk about balls. Balls, yeah. yeah balls. Let's talk about balls. Yeah, um, balls. A lot of people watch their balls. Yeah. Um, I don't use a lot of conditioning. Um, memo, shampoo, relax. Yeah, shampoo, uh, bit, of, bit of powder, just um, the basics. Um, Rolla tells us a bit more about this funny memory he uh, had with Gatlin. I could hear Rolla in the bathroom and I said, Rolla, what are you doing? What are you doing? He <laughs> shouted back, I'm washing my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine, I'm like creeping in, peeping round, and there was about 30 balls in the shower. <laughs> Rugby balls, he's just washing them with the shower. <laughs> Absolute comedy gold, and he wasn't even trying to be funny. Uh, and by the way, when I washed the balls nowadays, not like years ago, I remember I used to put shampoo into it. <laughs> <laughs> and Rory Best was doing the line outs the next day, and there was bubbles coming out of the balls. <laughs> <laughs> The balls. The balls. Listen, they always say size doesn't matter, but 
Sometimes size matters, definitely. Check this video out. It's all about blazers. But I remember once in Australia, and um, the, the liaison officer, Australian guy, said to me, issue an edict, rather, and tell everybody to put their blazers in today. If or not they want their blazers cleaned, which I did. And uh, <laughs> the one blazer I forgot was yours. So I rang your man up and said, oh, Jesus, quick, come back. One blazer is not done. So your man came back, took Warren's blazer away. I think in order for him to get back at Lala, he put in a wash machine. <laughs> and right. he came back about that size. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, Jesus, how am I going to get out of this one? And uh, so I went up to Warren's room and knocked on the door. That's the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, knocked on the I knocked on the floor because <laughs> I was nearly on the floor. And uh, I held the blazer. Out. Warren answered on. I held the blazer out like that. So he couldn't see me, but he saw the blazer. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Warren, mm, wait till I tell you this story. I don't know. He just, he just laughed, you know. So in actual fact, it was, it was, it was a sort of looking away because I was able to give my blazer to Warren, which got me out of the predicament. <laughs> and I ended up with Tom Tom's blazer. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the stories. Touring and stories, it's amazing. For me, the great about that content is that you see that they're actually human and they're not bad guys, you know what I mean? But because they're our enemy, yeah. we see them as bad guys. Well, but we'll, we'll, we'll make friends after Afterwards, the afterwards. Yeah, we'll have a cold one after. That's a great laugh, but talking about laughs, Rickers has some comedy to talk about. Bias snarks, my friend, bias snarks. Um, on a serious note, there's been a huge increase, uh, according to guys with white coats, thick glasses and um, calculator skills, in post-traumatic hosting disorder. Everybody knows the pressures and stress of hosting a rugby game at your house. And I felt that I should just give a bit of guidance, just to relieve a bit of that stress. Um, first and foremost is your guest ratio. Always make sure you invite your own friends, your good friends. You need the emotional support, you work hard during the week, and you need to relax. Secondly, make sure your wife or partner has some of her friends, preferably the ones with the biggest gears. Because if she's happy, if she's occupied, she doesn't have time to create tasks for you. And you can relax. The third rule, of course, no in-laws. You don't need the stress. You don't want to make a scene in front of company. Okay? Also, very important, make sure to request that your guest Uber. Okay? It's safe. I mean, we all know what happens on a Saturday. You're not going to drink tea and water unless you are on a diet or busy with your 12-step program, and it's safer. Also, it doesn't, st it, it doesn't put stress on, on you and your neighbor's relationship. You don't have to explain why there's donuts in his driveway or why his grass is um, spun out, okay? Remember children, especially it's an issue when it's not yours. It's a known fact, other people's children are 80 to 90% naughtier than your own. So make sure they have a secluded area away from your watching area, preferably soundproof. You don't want the anthems to compete with Let It Go from Frozen. You can't have that, okay? Put them away, separate, get an iPad or a room in a, in a soundproof area away from the, the adults. If you can't do that, do some innovations, make a plan, maybe some stove pain in the oil so hour and a half before the game, okay? Then, another good point, food. You have to eat. Please tell your friends who's coming to eat before they come, just to relieve some stress, and the basics apply. Uh, 10 minutes before the kickoff, you start the fire, okay? Half time, you double up on your wood. Charcoal if there's an emergency, okay? That means exactly that will give you 15 minutes Post-game, time to fix a drink or wash your face if you've been crying before the girls are ready for the meat. Also, snacks. Stack up on snacks. Not just chips. 
think outside of the box, be considerate, have some healthy options like biltong or nuts and leave the backyard door open so your vegan friends can go graze on their own, own um, time. Okay, last but not least and probably the most important, ice. You can never have enough ice. There's always going to be some people who's uninvited who pitches and you can never have enough. You can always use it. It's always, you never know when you want to get someone's attention or when you need to transport the ear. You know how this stuff works. Long and the short, it's all about the gears. Get your gears up, get your adrenaline pumping. You are carrying the team. Go Bokka. Bokka? Bokka? It's Friday. Bokka! It's Saturday. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. How do you come up with that stuff? <laughs> Just life in general. Like, like transport an ear. <laughs> I've been to pretty rough Saturdays. But Where do you live? Pretoria. Well, that is exactly my point. Um. <laughs> guys, a quick reminder, guys. Stay tuned until the end of the show for this week's 10 Millionaires. My MTN Yellow Box is making 10 millionaires in 10 weeks, plus loads more Boza prizes. Join, upgrade, or recharge with bundles. Dial star 234 hash or download the MTN app. Join Yellow Box for chance to win. My MTN Yellow Box is making 10 millionaires in 10 weeks, plus giving away loads more buzzer prizes. Get in on the action with any My MTN home offer for simple, affordable home Wi-Fi, like 200 gigs for just 399 per month. That's 200 gigs plus a router for only 399. So call us, click mtn.coza, or visit an MTN store today for a chance to win. It's go time, Boca. Everywhere you go, MTN. We've got some inside scoops in the Springbok bubble. Uh, so check this behind the scenes content. Our day is uh, pretty much starts on a Sunday where we have uh, recovery morning and, and our medicals and a lot of bumps and bruises. <laughs> it's of course necessary after intense training to gain the recovery and the pool and the ice bath. Some guys love it. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the best feeling, it was pretty cold as well, so um, yeah, I wasn't very happy, but I did it. Everybody does what they have to do, and they've got their own way of doing it, but geez, some of those guys can take the cold pretty, pretty well. Easy. Polar bear. <laughs> Big birthday for Marcus Zolle. Um, I think he had a special day. We tried to make it as special as we could. Happy birthday, dear people. It's been a, a, a really good week, tough week. Um, some some hard questions asked on Monday by the coaches, um, but I think the boys reacted well. Training went really well, so everyone's got a lot of energy and excitement for the weekend. Intensity just went up tenfold. You can just imagine. It's very intense for us. Semi-final mindset. Must win game for us Saturday, so everybody's been pretty locked in. Prep has been going very well. Um, we've analysed. The things that uh, went wrong in the first test, um, so yeah, we've been working on that and uh, I think the energy and the way the guys bought in, uh, obviously we were hurting uh, from losing that uh, first test. Um, we went off by a lot, but we know technically we weren't at the best, um, so yeah, we've just been working on that. It's the first time that I think everybody's been in the bubble. Um, so I think it's new for everybody, it's a new adjustment for everybody, but um, I think adapting to it has been has been fun. I mean, I think they've made it comfortable for us here where we are now. So um, it's different, but it's something that we're gonna unfortunately have to get used to. The boys have been playing some pool that's gotten really competitive. Um, there's been card games, there's been PlayStation, there's been Xbox. Um, yeah, I think the pool's been has been uh, uh, the most enjoyable for me, and and yeah, it gets really competitive, so it's been good. Sometimes I see Peter Steff there, Jürgen there, Marvin there. Peter Steff the toy. Um, he loves playing pool. Then every now and then there's a little bit of a poker game going on. I think the girls play cards. I think that's how they keep themselves sane, and obviously the gym and and all the other stuff, but. Um, 
Yeah, I think everybody pretty much does their own thing that keeps, keeps their mind pretty clear. Especially when you're in a bubble, haircuts are important. We got the one and only barber in the team. It's Damien Willemse. And Marvin already cut to Damien Willemse's hair as well. So there's a bit of a show between the two, but I'll give it to Damien Willemse. He does a worthwhile job at the end of the day. Jump at the spring marks is intense, um, especially amongst the forwards, some big boys. Uh, obviously, everyone knows about Ibn and throws all the big weights around, and Joseph Dweb was not far behind either. So, uh, yeah, energy is fantastic. Um, Franco has been the DJ. The Franco playlist, I, I don't remember what always comes first, but the one song I've heard quite often is Thomas. I don't know what the real name of the song is. Thomas, say what your name is. Luckily there was a TV show we could watch the Blitz Walker play, so that was our entertainment in the gym this week. We've got so much respect for those guys. The amount of training they put in physically is just something that we, we weren't able to do physically. So they are absolute freaks, so a lot of respect for them. Yeah, it's a tough sport. I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I'd lost 30 seconds in that. That's intense. That's hectic. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, this is the team announcement for the second test uh, against the British and Irish Lions. Being uh, in the team as well again for the weekend uh, is very special uh, to get another chance to play against the British and Irish Lions. But uh, full focus on uh, you know getting it over the line and uh, winning the second one. It's time for who this. It was in American accent. Who this? Who 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 this? Who that one. Is? It's a part of the show that's all about the players. And today we've uh, got some big players to talk about. Um, some have big reputations. Uh, some of these guys are just big, mm -hmm. very 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 big. Let's start with the player every book fan hates to admit is an incredible player. Obviously, Owen Farrell. He has a calming thing about him that we just can't deny. He, he's, he's experienced, um, he's talented, he's physical, um, as we all know. Um, yeah, he ha just has this little one glitch and that's the fact that he, he has a bit of a controversial edge when it comes to defence. But still, yeah, I think that sums up the best. We, we love to hate the guy and um, it is partially because he's so good and partially because yeah, he's, he can be a bit controversial, but he has, he has immense classy touches. And I mean like that, being able to read the game and seeing the space and, and putting the ball behind the defenders, that is class. For me, he just needs to learn how to tackle. Yeah. And it's, he just <laughs> doesn't use arms, he's no. just, for me. But for me, I think the last 30 minutes, if you have an own foul coming on in the last 30 minutes, yeah, that's, that's, an un, that's, that's a bomb squad as it is. That's, that's a bomb squad on its own. Exactly. And once again, he's, he, once, once he's on, he brings a new dynamic. He, brings a, he's a, he is a physical guy. He can take it up. And then he, he, he has this tendency to create certain situations where, where he, he is controversial because he gets stuck in there and because he commits. From a person who's controversial like me at times, I don't really care what people think of me. <laughs> and I don't think he cares no, he doesn't. what people think about him. I think he can't. To, to be that type of player and to get that type of attention on you, you can't. You no, can't I, uh... I think he thrives off it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, another man who had an unbelievable game, Mario Itoji. <laughs> this guy's an athlete. He is, he's so physical. He's so disruptive in the rucks. Um, uh, we, we see him there, and, and that's his job, but he does it very, very well. He carries well. He's, a, he's just an amazing athlete. Let's be honest, uh, Eben's a very good friend of yours. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he got it over Eben in uh, Saturday's game. He what, did. What's your view? I think so. I think so as well. Um, uh, the only thing that I don't, that, well, that is if he's on his feet. Uh, when, okay, when he's yes, the, yes, trying yes. to. <laughs> he definitely did some illegal things. He did, he did. But 
give you, you give him a chance to die. I think he's he's going to have his number on them. But still, um, even even I think Itoji thrives on that type mm -hmm. of pressure. He loves the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. He's not going to back away either. Mm -hmm. And he is world class. I mean, he's a real thorn in our side. I still think Eben is number one in the world. Absolutely. No, there's no doubt. Here's another guy who I think is one of the most important changes this week. I love Kwaha, but I definitely think Jasper Visa is definitely an unbelievable move. Uh, he takes contact well. His defense is incredible. No one will tackle him first go. No. It's always going to be the second or the third person. He doesn't stop. He's just relentless. He's fit. He's strong. He's, he's a fetcher. And for me, to have him come off in this maybe 60th minute and you bring on Kwaha. That's, ah. That's what we want. And of course, you can't ignore that moustache. I mean, he's rocking a, a very lacquer moustache. Who, who does he look like? Well, he looks like the, the Hardy from Laurel and Hardy, ah! um, but just in shape, in shape, of course. <laughs> but you just mentioned it. Look at the leg drive and the physicality in the defense, and that's something we need today. Yeah. I mean, if we can put that type of hits yes. on, on their runners and, and stop them behind the advantage line, that will give us the edge, and that, yeah. that's, I mean, oh. that's what we want. We want to see that, especially over Farrell. I would love that. Off the topic, how amazing is the song? <laughs> After Visa runs into you, this is how you'll be talking. Yeah, I think yeah, are doing this, yeah. No, for me, I think he's very important. For me, I think he is the future of the eight. Yeah. I would say him or Noche. What do you think? Absolutely. Noche. Noche. Yeah, but all depending on, well, definitely, definitely, both of them. But seeing that Dwayne is senior now, he's, he's getting to the end of his yeah. career. That's the type of guy you want to fit the mold. And that's the type of thing we want to see. The aggressiveness, the nature. You know, you can see he doesn't back away from any confrontational situation. And that is South African. And that's what we want. And that's what we need all the, the, the eight forwards to do today. It's going to be an unbelievable game. And I hope we go against them. Eight versus eight. Absolutely. And I don't want people to go in as individuals, but that's an unbelievable guy. I think Jasper is really going to make a huge impact today. And I look forward to seeing the match that's going to be making. But for me... My highlight mm. of today's game, Stephen Kishop, the ginger ninja. Mm. They call him in Tosa, oh, spicy plum, nango spicy plum, akazalu spicy plum. Everybody <laughs> loves Briklak. We love him. He's, he's extremely strong. He's a great carrier of the ball. Mm. And I think it's his 50. It's his 50th test today. A big day for him. He gets to, to run out against the British and Irish Lions probably... I mean, he's, he's never going to get a chance like that again. Well, except next week, maybe. But, but in, a, in a tour. And we need him. He needs to put up his hand. I feel bad for, for Ox. I must say, I think he had a brilliant it's game. Unfortunate. Um, he, he's a great scrummer. He's a very low center of gravity. But when it comes to Kitsi, I mean, talk about scrumming. Talk about um, dominating contact situations. And once again, he, we keep saying it. We need it from everybody. But especially, him, we need his physicality. We need his involvement today. He can also poach. He's a great mm. poacher. Mm. He has a... He has a the the silent killer. He is. He is. He, he's, but we need him. Everybody. We need everybody to, remember? to be... Someone played their 50th game in the final of the Rugby World Cup, and that was Sia, Sia. Colisi. Pollard played his 50th last week. He had a great game as well. Absolutely. And I think the 50, I think Steven, and I think Steven will get to at least maybe 113 tests. Absolutely. He's still got at least seven, eight years ahead of him. He's a prop. Everybody knows. Only past 32. That's mm. when the guys are in their mold. That's when they they just get smarter. And they just get smarter and they just scrum stronger. So, yeah, I hope he's, he, we need him today. We need, he needs to put on his diff lock, get into low range, and just move that three backwards the whole time. So, what are you thinking for your, your picks? Who are we putting on the fireplace? Well, we have to go with Stephen. Stephen Gishel? Absolutely. We're going to have to go with Stephen. And then, of course... Yeah, yeah, definitely us. Definitely yes. us. Huh? We need the fire in both of these guys to spark. I don't know if... The, there it is. Stephen is already on fire there. I see. Stephen's already on fire. Ha, ha, ha. Funny. There it is. I say Stephen Kishoff will get man of the match today, or Jasper will get man of the match. That'll be great. Now, now, guys at home, by the end of the three games, a few Springbok players will have distinguished themselves with standout performances. Players who have changed the game for their team and their country. Only one of them can be the MTN book of the series. And we need your vote to select the winner. Voting lines will be open at half time. Just SMS the player's jersey number to 40737 at 1 Rand 50 per SMS. And make sure your book of the series is the book of the series. It's go time, booker. And don't complain if your person doesn't win if you haven't voted.
South Africa. A nation not weakened by our differences, but strengthened by them. When we connect around our shared passions and bring all our differences together, then we are unstoppable. It's go time, Boca. It's go time, Zanzi. Yesterday, we were lucky enough to sit down with a man who needs no introduction. He's the captain, he's a legend, he's Sia Kulisi. Kulisi, Sia Mdanda Kulisi, Captain Wetong Mkosa. First question, does this game rank as one of the biggest games of your life? Yes, this game does rank as one of the biggest games of my life. Um, yeah, I think it's as important as it was when we played the semi-finals against Wales. And, um, uh, but now the, the only difference with this game, why it's even bigger, because this will only happen every 12 years with the World Cup. It's only four years' time. We're down 1-0. How do we turn things around? Um, we turn things around by making sure that we are better at the mistakes that we made on Saturday and we make sure we control all the controllables that we know as a team we've already looked at. I think that's the only way we can turn things around, to make sure that we have a presence and things that we're good at, we make sure that we impose that and we make sure that our game plan is much, is more effective than theirs. Is it just me or does he make me feel calmer? Like I feel calmer about this afternoon's game. Imagine how his team feels. Sia, what is it like playing against the British and Irish Lions? Yeah, it's, it's special playing against them. It's something that, uh, you know, you wait for such a long time for. And, you know, it feels like, you know, yeah, you, you want to give it your best at all times. You want to be at your best and you want to make sure that you are as prepared as you can be because we will never get this opportunity again, as most of us um, in this group. And so, yeah, um, hopefully they, we make we, we turn up even more for an 80, perform, 80 minute performance because I thought we had a good first half and other than that and then we lost our discipline and those kind of things. And finally, how different is the pressure you felt during the World Cup final and this Saturday's test? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I take I take it uh, I, like the when I play for the Springbok, it's always the same. I try it. Keep it consistent. It doesn't. The game don't change who I am and my processes and my values and what I stand for. And that's what I rely on and who I trust in, uh, obviously. And me personally, I trust in God. He's in control at all times. And and that's what I put all the pressure. I give it to him and I tell him he's in control. And every game, every game is always important for us. But obviously, this one determines whether. The series is won or lost or it's going to be drawn or whatever. So, yeah, it's really um, important. But for me personally, it, it, it can't change as much as you feel the pressures. But I try and be as consistent as I can. Great answer, Sia Khaleesi, captain of the Springboks. Let's see, I was just on social media and Jacques says, how dare we mention eight men without talking about Ruiz? Well, that is a great point. I Sorry, mean, Jacques. Jacques, I had the man from Yellow Cap, we just had to add that because I went onto social media and he was like, how can you not mention Russ? Uh, Sorry, Jacques. Sorry. But good point. Good, good point. Good I mean, point. The, he's up and coming. Yeah. He's, a, he's also robust. He's mm. a big guy. Uh, I saw him, for, uh, followed him at, at Pearl Boys High. We was, we start, we, he played his, his, his rugby for the Nineveh trick and he was about the same size as he is now. Mm. And again, it's a typical South African mold. He's big, he's strong and he's fast mm. as well. Just a pure athlete and definitely I think it's a matter of time mm. before he slots in there. Jacques from Yellow Cap, follow him on uh, social media. Great guy. See, we had to, I, I, I mentioned you. <laughs> Next up, we're talking to another truly inspiring South African. He was told he would never play sport in school because of his dwarfism so he became his school's first team cricket captain now Gareth Manson how are you doing he's now a YouTuber with over 20,000 subscribers and is with us this afternoon thanks for joining Gareth hey gents thanks for having me so honored to be here with you Lacker, man. thank you for pulling in 
It's the big day. It's uh, it's uh, well. God, it's a big day. It's it's everybody is stressing. My my palms are sweaty. It oh, sounds a, like an MTM song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put your nails left. Put your nails left. Just please. So how are you feel? How are you feeling about today? Um, I, I'm pretty confident today. I think the boys have it in them. Um, you know, we learned a lot from last week. It has been a challenging week, obviously, with everything in the media. But I think we have what it takes to to go all the way. I mean, we've rattled the Lions. Now it's time to rattle them even more in the field and to show the world why we are the best in the world, why we are World Cup winners, and why we are the most unique team in sporting history. So I'm ready. I'm pumped. I think we're going to smash them. Do you, do you think... I love that. I love that. Please <laughs> make that come true. Do you think there'll be a huge uh, uh, difference in, in strategy from, from both sides? Or do you think they'll just stick to what they know um, and just do, per perfecting it? I'm hoping to see something different. You know, we, we, we've, we're constantly seeing our boys kicking up and unders and doing things differently. I want to see more running. I want to see more giving the ball to the wings, showing Cheslin Colby why he's one of the best, um, as well as Makuzola Mapimpi. I want to see us attack the British and Irish line, scare them, put them under pressure. I think if we start running the game rather than our tactical kicking, I think we'll just have a better advantage and it's going to shock the team and, and really give us the, the way forward into showing it. We did it in the World Cup final. Everyone thought we were going to play a kicking game. But then all of a sudden, we started running and attacking. No one knew what was coming on. We shocked England. I want that exact same performance um, tonight where we take on the British and Irish Lions. We can definitely do it. So who is your man of the match for today? Who do you think is going to really show out that standing performance uh, for today's game? So if I have to agree with you guys, I'm going with the ginger ninja, spicy plum, <laughs> Stephen Kitsoff, all the way. Yeah. Great game. I think he's going to... I think he's going to be electric. I'm glad he's starting. Um, as you said, he's got so many years ahead of him. Um, it's a big day for, for Stephen, and um, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I hope he just pummels the boys, puts the pressure on uh, Mako, and puts the pressure on Ty for long. I mean, two quality international props. I want him to show that, you know what, you might be big boys overseas, but you haven't met a South African, and here we go. So for me, today is all about no excuses because I think South Africa as a team has every reason to have an excuse about why they're not going to win today. They have every reason. We haven't played in two years. Mm. We're rusty, blah, 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 blah. And I think you're the perfect epitome of a person who's like, stuff excuses. I don't care what, it, there's no excuses. It's all about reasons or results. Tell us about your story, man. Uh, you're very modest about it, but please tell us about your story. You know, excuses is it's just like something I don't believe in, you know. Being a person with dwarfism, I couldn't play rugby because as I grew older, you know, when you're in junior school, you and your friends are similar height. But as my friends grew taller, I stayed the same height. So I realized there's no way for me to play the sport. But you know what? I love the sport. I wanted to be a part of the sport. So I decided to create my YouTube channel where I can review, preview, do live streams and entertain and get to know people and also to inspire people that um, no matter what your challenges are, whether it's physical, mental, you know, if you can't play the sport, go on and achieve dreams and uh, live out your dream. And that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing my sporting passion with people, even though I can't play it, but I can at least share it with the world. And, you know, with being a dwarf, there are times when I can't do certain things. But uh, what's the point of making an excuse? Live life to the full. Do what you can. And, and, you know, you only live once. So make the best of, of what you can in the life. Love that. That's exactly the attitude all of the Springboks that everybody needs. And I think they have. I think, I think today is going gonna, is gonna, to... You said it. There's no more excuses. The talk is done. It's no. time to go out full-blown and, and hit it. Tell me something. Uh, um, in terms of the, the fly-half battle today, uh, it's, it's something that's been overlooked a bit. Um, you mentioned that there's obviously you, you want the, the guys to, to run more and, and be a bit more creative in, in terms of attack. However, the, the kicking game is still... A big part Definitely. of it, and especially, but kicking smart, as, as, as we said. Do you think there's going to be... How do you see the two fly-offs uh, uh, battling it out? I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, Dan Bigger is known for playing a solid game and he's got a good boot on him. But, you know, Andre Pollard, when in form, he's one of the, the best. So it's a key role. It's one of the most toughest positions out there because they control the game. Uh, they're kicking the points. They're controlling where to go, where to pass from um, Fuff. So for me, it's going to be a massive game. And like I said, I want running, but we're going to see kicking. So the guys need to be confident. They need to be alert. Um, Andre is going to need to be calm and make sure that, you know, those points go over tactically on not just 
place kicking, but kicking for the lineouts, making sure you're getting the enough distance. Defense from the 22, getting the ball out, making sure you're not kicking the ball so we have a scrum all the way back. It's it's a key role for these guys, and they just need to be an alert. Um, the battle, I think I think Andre would win it. Um, obviously, on the bench, you've got Owen Farrell, who's experienced. And I mean, we all know he's his favorite. Okay, maybe not I'm being a bit sarcastic, but one of our West guys out there, <laughs> especially if the Farrell tackle comes out. But, um, you know, we'll just have to, we, we'll be ready for them. Jason Colby sidestepped him before, we'll sidestep him again. And it's a big day for Damien Willems coming on mm. from the bench. So it's a good opportunity for the youngsters. And credit to Jacques and Rassi for giving. And another opportunity to Damien because it's going to boost his confidence. You could have gone the safe option and put in Mornay Stone, but they didn't. They got the faith in the, in Damien. So I think it's a great game for for Damien and a phenomenal opportunity for him and Andre to really lead the game and convert the points and take on this opportunity to beat these guys and make it even bigger for next week's game. I think this man loves rugby. Absolutely. Uh, I think you love rugby. I think, <laughs> I think you love rugby. I think this is your sport. Just a little bit. I think, you, I think you know your rugby. I think you well. know your rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but, uh, but, 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 but lastly, man, what are your ambitions for yourself getting into rugby? Do we have thousands of people watching? What do you want to happen in your rugby career? If there's anyone watching here, collaborations and where to from here? Uh, I think there's always that dream of super sport giving you a little contact and inviting you to be, I don't know, one day a sidekick next to the heroes like uh, the nice boy does Mots even to, to be in a part of her as a phenomenal anchor. My dream is to get picked up by a network and maybe given an opportunity to share my passion out there. You know, there's not many disabled people out there in a, in a sport like rugby who get to share their passion. I would love to be one of the first and uh, just to show the world that again, no matter what disability or challenges you have, you can live your dream. It's just up to you to have the attitude and the mindset to, to, to take it to the next level. So, yeah, any network or whatever, any opportunity to go further. But my main dream and um, is to one day when we back out of COVID is to carry that Springbok flag at the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium and walk the boys out. That is my ultimate goal one day in life. Ooh. You know, it, See, now that, that, that's definitely, because we have some uh, SA rugby people watching here, so I'm mm. sure that's definitely, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll keep it. Zebra, what an inspiring time to talk to you, man. I know you from social media. I follow you. We're always seeing your tweets. Great job. Thank Love you. your work. You know your rugby. I don't know why you have a Lions jersey in the back. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, please throw that away. It's please for the Brian later. Yeah. for the Brian later. For the Brian later. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much for having us. You're amazing, man. Enjoy the game, bud. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. Keep Bye. Up. The clock is ticking, and there may be no fans at the stadium for this evening's game, but we've got Robbie Cruz down there ready to tell us what's going down on the ground. Once again, to all our South African viewers and our viewers from across the globe, the scene is set for the second test between the British and Irish Lions and, of course, the world champions, the Springboks. This is, of course, the second test that's being played at this stadium, only the second international but uh, the scene is set for an historic occasion and it's going to be a historic result because if the British and Irish Lions win this game, they will of course win the series, but if the Springboks pull it level, then it's going to be one apiece. Now the conditions at the Cape Town Stadium are absolutely incredible. It's a stunner of a day, same as last week, about 20 degrees Celsius. The conditions are slightly moist underfoot, but still promises to be an epic occasion. Last week the park took a bit of a knock. We did see some of the turf turning up, but the ground staff have done an incredible job. Like I mentioned, it's a stunner out in Cape Town. The scene is set. It's sad that we can't have any fans here, but we've got messages from all around the world, whether it's Wales, Scotland, Ireland, England. Also got wa uh, messages, rather, from all over parts of South Africa. Bali Kulisi, the Sia Kulisi, one team, one nation, and he's going to be leading the Springboks out here today, of course. The scene is set here in Cape Town for what promises to be all-out rugby war. Back to you guys in studio. Woo! Can't wait. I'm ant. I am so pumped. It's there. It's a perfect day to play rugby. Guys, it's time to give away some prizes. Rickus, let the people know our second winner is. Our second My Home Stadium winner is Lee Andrew Louise. And let's take a, a look at his entry. Ah, oh, check it. He's picked. Ah. Oh, there we go. They've got us cuddling. Why am I swollen? Ah, uh, that's how you normally look. Okay. Look at that. Just a bit of water. Potential. Side by side. Oh, uh, that is real. Mandela special. would be proud. 
There we go. Uh, thank you, Mandel. Oh, uh, Bulls, 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 Bulls supporter, supporter and uh, a Stormer. That's very interesting, I must say. What's happened? No, they have the same sponsor now. Okay. They have the same sponsor. Okay, then we can probably work. I like Doesn't the, the, the castle. Doesn't cost a lager. That definitely needs a cooler and some ice. <laughs> and Check there we the go. Dog man. How can that person not win? Congratulations. I saw this one earlier and I was just like, this is unbelievable. It's fantastic. I love that dog. A no, no, man. <laughs> It's amazing. We've got two more of these fantastic prizes to give away, people. So set up your home stadium and post with hashtag my home stadium, hashtag to enter. Good luck, Bok fans. It's go time. I'm nervous. I'm excited. It is the game. Stephen Kishoff, 50. Yes, if he gets a chance, Damien Vrimza comes on and it's going to be Malherba Kishoff. It's going to be an unbelievable game. And I think we're going to take it home. And then next week, we're going to bring it home to one to the spring box. Gonna, gonna be a proper final setup. Same as now, but now it's time to get in it, start the fires, pop the beers. I'm stressed. Don't forget to share all the things, retweet, share, show us the pictures of your particular homestead, and we could win some incredible prizes with MTN and Cost Lager. My name is Siv Nessi, and this is. Rikers. Except for your chassin. Bye, my chummy. Let's do Cheers, it. guys. I'll see you in the game. Yay! <laughs> It's Friday then, it's Saturday, 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 It's Friday then, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, Friday then, this Saturday. Saturday.